So see where I'm coming from. You're you're leading with curiosity in this conversation and you're trying to understand how you can help her. Not understand what you're doing wrong. Get out of the mindset that it's all your fault. You guys are in this together. If you want a sex life together, you have to solve sex problems together. Welcome to What I Love About Sex, where some incredible guests and I, Steph Kanowski, will be bringing you the tools for improving your sex life with topics such as sex issues with your partner, sexual self-confidence, premature ejaculation, sexual shame, masturbation, sharing your fetishes, orgasmic pleasure, and more. Sex is still so taboo, and I personally believe that by improving our understanding and communication skills around sex, we can enhance our own self-pleasure as well as deepening our long-term romantic relationships. So listen in, try to stay open-minded, and let's get started. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode on the What I Love About Sex podcast. Oh man, I caught the flu the last week. Feels like a car ran over my body and I'm still, the other day I felt really good and now I feel like another car ran over my body and I'm like, fuck. So I hope you guys are staying healthy out there. It is hard to stay completely healthy this time of year and not catch something. So yeah, hoping I'm back to normal soon, but Um, I appreciate the feedback I've been getting from you guys. And in fact, I want, I want to just ask you to shoot me over an email at Stephanie Ganowski, um, info at Stephanie com, And let me know how the podcast is helping you. You know, if there, if there are episodes that you think I should do, um, that you think a lot of men are dealing with, and it would be helpful for the majority of the audience, send those topics over. You know, shoot me an email if there was a certain topic that really hit home, that really helped you in your relationship. I love the feedback. Um, even if you leave a review on this podcast, it, it, you know, sharing that information, it really helps me understand what type of episodes to make next. So I appreciate you. And um, yeah, feel free to do that at info at com. All right. So today, today I want to talk about the two the two main uh the two main things to pay attention to if you feel like your woman isn't fully sexually satisfied and there's a lot of you in this situation where you're like i'm really not sure if she is we don't really talk about it um i think she is she doesn't she doesn't tell me anything so i guess it's not my problem she's not telling me um you know, I I never ask her, but she makes noises as if she's enjoying it. So there's a lot of, there's often a lot of assuming and not total confidence in knowing for certain whether your woman is really enjoying sex with you and enjoying her sex life. So, I mean, that's not your problem. If she's not enjoying her sex life, um, a lot of that responsibility is on her, right? In fact, most of it. But When you, how you can help, and I'm not saying this is your full responsibility, I'm saying where you can help is by doing two things. The first one is make sure that you're providing adequate clitoral stimulation during sexual experiences. A lot of guys allow their egos to get in the way here and they'll think, oh, well, if my dick is good enough, I'll be able to provide vaginal stimulation that feels even better than clitoral and she doesn't need clitoral. And it's a shame that so many men think this way and think that it says something about their dick not being good enough or the way they have sex not being good enough. And that's why she can only come clitorally. That's not the case. That's not, that's not it. And when you stop making it about you and you start making it more about her and her actual pleasure and satisfaction, then you'll do the things to clitorally stimulate her. Because 75% of women can only feel pleasure through clitoral stimulation. And it doesn't say anything about the guy It's and him not working correctly. You can be 
the best at sex out there, but still be with a woman who needs her clit stimulated in order to orgasm. And that's not a bad thing either. You know, like Freud and all these fucked up historical figures <laughs> were um, would say that, oh, the clitoral stimulation is not, um, the clitoral orgasm is not the the primary orgasm. It's not, there's nothing like a vaginal orgasm. And they'll say it's, it's not the vaginal superior and the clitoral is not enough. And all women can vag- get there vaginally with time or if they like, like, no, 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 no. First of all, even the women vaginally orgasming are still having their clits stimulated. The clit goes is, is much bigger internally. As you see it on the outside, it's this little nub, right? But inside, it's about five inches. Um, so it's pretty big. And it's where the majority of our pleasure stems from, even through vaginal penetration. Um, because that, that penetration is being pressed on the internal clitoris. So, so point number one is clitoral stimulation is needed for the majority of women to feel pleasure during sex. And if she's not being clitorally stimulated, she's not going to enjoy sex as much. It's really that simple. I mean, there's so many women out there who are just being penetrated. And sure, that's a, that's a good feeling if you're really intimate with the guy and you really love him and care about him, then that feels really good regardless. Like it feels good to be full of him, but pleasure wise, it, it doesn't get you to orgasm. Like it, it's not, it's not the full pleasure. So no matter how much she loves you, no matter how much she finds you attractive, she still most likely needs this. And you, you have to be there to give it to her, right? If she's giving you her vagina to go inside of, you should give her the proper stimulation that gets her off just as that gets you off. So keep that in mind and really try to make that a priority and lose the idea that something's wrong with you if you can't give her a vaginal orgasm and lose the idea that clitoral orgasms are not superior because they're fucking amazing, okay? <laughs> like, let me tell you, they're fucking amazing. And there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with being a woman, as me, a woman myself, for not being able to orgasm vaginally and needing that clitoral stimulation. I don't feel bad for myself. I don't feel bad for the other 75% of women out there. We get amazing orgasms through our clitoris and we get to feel full you know, penetration plus stimulation is the best, you know, add a little anal play into there. It's amazing. I can't imagine anything better. So I never look down on a guy for not figuring out how to do that with my body. My body just won't do that. And that's totally cool. I'm totally great, fine and dandy with what my body does. And this is how the majority of women feel. But you just have to be the guy that that understands that and steps in and does what he can to provide pleasure in the way that, that her body wants to receive it. All right. So, um, so clitoral stimulation, go for it. If you don't want to, if she doesn't want you going down on her, um, there are other ways to clitorally stimulate her. You can use toys such as vibrators. Um, you can use your fingers caressing really slowly. The trick is to always start slowly Okay, and then in a circular, slow, very gentle motion, because the clitoris is super sensitive, so we don't want to be like, it's not the same as you jerk off your dick. Some of you jerk off like it's the end of the world. <laughs> the world is coming to an end and you have two seconds left to ejaculate. <laughs> Some of you go really intense with your death grips. That's not, that's the opposite of how you treat a clitoris, right? I'm sure I'm sure most of you know that, but I know there's a lot of guys who who tend to go like full speed ahead on the clitoris and it's just way too much. Um, so yeah, slow, very slow, gentle motions. Tell her to tell you when it's time to speed up. And that's really the best, best place to start is to use your fingers, um, especially because a lot of women aren't comfortable with you going down on them. And You know, even if it's your wife of however many years, I hear a lot of stories of guys who are like, my wife doesn't want me down there. And one of the one of the biggest sexual insecurities among women 
is that they are afraid that they smell down there. They won't taste good. So that's a big insecurity, and it's the reason why a lot of women don't want you down there. Um, so if you can make her feel more comfortable by starting with your hand or starting with a toy, um, this is the best way to to get her to feel pleasure and also um, know that you really do want to pleasure her and that she doesn't have to feel self-conscious in the process um, or less self-conscious than if your head was down there, right? So do what you can um, to satisfy her clitorally. And the second point I want to make is ask her if she's being sexually satisfied in your relationship. Because a common theme is to get sexually rejected again and again and just shut down, right? You guys, I mean, women get sexually rejected too, but but talking to you guys, I know the majority of men, in my audience anyway, are more sexually rejected than their female partners. And it's most common overall, more common overall. But I want you to get in a habit of not shutting down, but being curious as to why this is happening. Because curiosity sometimes overrides that awkwardness of, of the constant rejection and not knowing what to say next. If you don't know what to say and you feel upset and you just want to shut down, I really encourage you to take a moment if you need a moment, but come back and try to be curious about why she's continuously shutting you down. Chances are there's something about your sex life she's not feeling good about. There's something about your sex together that isn't bringing her pleasure. And the only way you can enhance her pleasure, therefore enhance the frequency um, or increase the frequency of your sex life, is to know what's wrong, right? Is to find that missing piece. And a lot of us don't want to find the missing piece because sex is such a topic that we we take so personally, right? It's like, oh, if she doesn't want sex with me, like you know, why the fuck not? We get very defensive and we're afraid to hear any feedback that could hurt us because no one wants to be told you suck in bed, right? And hopefully you never hear that. You never hear it that way. But that's like the biggest fear, right? Is like her telling you, I hate the way you fuck me or like you're you're terrible. You're terrible at fucking me. You fuck me like a high schooler, right? That's something my my client's ex said to him and it really scarred him. Like, I hope that you have a woman who can maturely share with you that she's unsatisfied. But but your response to that is, let's figure it out together. Like, what can I do more of to help you find more satisfaction so that you want to have sex? Like, what would it take for you to want to have sex with me or want to have sex more frequently? Don't make it about you. Make it about her and her sex life. What would what can I help you with to make you want to have more sex? You know, then it's not about you. It's not like, what am I doing wrong? You know, it's not about you never want to fuck me. You never blow me. Oh, it's about time. You know, it's none of that happens because you're leading with curiosity instead. And you're getting curious about why she's not wanting sex, which is one of the best, the best feelings and best experiences out there. And and there are things, of course, that happen in the body and mind that prevent us from wanting this amazing thing. But if you don't fully understand it now, the only way to fully understand it is to ask questions and lead with that curiosity. And don't take it personally. So that way you can lead with curiosity. Because you can't lead with curiosity, be genuinely curious about why she's not wanting sex more frequently if you're going in with this defensive mode of like, all right, got to protect myself. Like if she says this to me, I'm going to flip like, you know, like try to stay calm, try to stay calm. It's not, don't make it about you. Don't make it about you. As much as it feels about you, don't make it about you. Even if it is, let's say the reasoning is you're not pleasuring her because you never pay attention to clitoral stimulation and that's the reason she's unsatisfied take that as okay i'm gonna help her do this i'm gonna help her provide clitoral stimulation don't think like it's your fault because it's actually more her fault for not speaking up and saying hey i know my body i know i need this um would you please do this more and if she has asked you that and you're you're failing to to go through with it, then it is your fault. All right. Then that's a fuck up, but we all make mistakes. So, so see where I'm coming from. You're, you're leading with curiosity in this conversation and you're trying to understand how you can help her. 
not understand what you're doing wrong. Get out of the mindset that it's all your fault. You guys are in this together. If you want a sex life together, you have to solve sex problems together. And it's they're supposed to be problems during sex, like within your sex life. There, there always will be. It's never going to be great. It's never going to be completely easy all the time. That's just not how it is. It's not. And even like me being in the best sex life I've had with my partner now, we still hit little road bumps where we have to stop and talk about certain things or ask questions. And, and um, that's normal. Like, you know, I don't see that as something where it's like, this is a red flag. It's just like, no, it, just like every other area of life, there's going to be hiccups and bumps and you just got to communicate through it so you can move past it as quickly as possible. Um, and I also have been in a relationship that, that hardly ever gave, provided me with clitoral stimulation, even though I asked for it. And that was, that was a sex life that was frequent enough. It was really whenever he wanted it. It was kind of fucked up. It was very fucked up. (laughs) Um, and it was whenever he wanted it and it wasn't, um, he didn't provide me with clitoral stimulation, which is what I needed. So, so just getting fucked, you know, was, did nothing for me because I wasn't, I, I wasn't feeling cared for truly by this person. Um, I felt like he was very selfish and me giving myself to him in that way only really like disgusted myself. Like, why am I with this person? And it was this constant question but I never communicated with him. I never opened up because I just like thought it was a lost cause. He never communicated. He was definitely not the one to talk about anything like that. He would shut me down when I tried. So then I shut down. And it's like, if you find yourself in a relationship like this where you can't talk about things, that's when you should just expect your sex life to die and for it to never get better. It can't get better unless you guys are able to talk about it more than you are able to do it. So if you're not having sex right now, and chances are you're not talking about sex enough and you're not getting curious and you're not figuring out what each other needs. So you just got to figure it out. You got to ask the questions. And in order to ask the questions, you got to come from curiosity, not defensiveness. All right. So I hope this was helpful. Um, the two main points were clitoral stimulation how often are you doing it? And if your woman says she doesn't want you going down on her, what are other white ways you can provide her at clitoral stimulation? Uh, even if she touches herself during sex, like do you think, try different things that will work to provide her that pleasure so that she's actually enjoying herself in bed. And second thing is ask her questions. If you feel like you're in a weird sex rut, you don't understand Ask her questions and come from the place of that genuine curiosity of, you know, I'm wondering how I can help you enjoy sex more. What needs to happen? What needs to happen? How can I help you? I want you to enjoy it and and just come from that place. So that is it, guys. Remember to email me any feedback from the podcast. Like I said, if something's really helped you, if you want to hear more about a certain topic that you think would help the majority of listeners on this show, email me at info at stephaniegonowski.com and I'd love to hear from you or leave a review on this podcast on iTunes or Spotify and I'd greatly appreciate that. So have an amazing morning. (laughs) My was so sick. (laughs) Have an amazing morning, evening or night, wherever you are in the world and I'll talk to you soon. I hope this episode helped you. If it did, I would love for you to leave me an iTunes review. It would mean the world to me. You can also screenshot your favorite episodes and tag me on Instagram at Steph Ganowski. And before I go, remember, your sex life is as good as you make it out to be. Until next time.